Okay, hi guys, welcome back to the Audio Levels channel. Welcome back to another review. And today we're taking a look at this, the Final Audio ZE8000. This is a true wireless earphone that is aimed at audiophiles. Final are an extremely popular niche headphone maker. Uh, they make some very expensive, some very fine headphones. For example, I have the FIBASS. I also have the Heaven 6. And I think I still have the Heaven 5, although I would need to go and look for them in my other house. Uh, and th there's one that I really want to try out from them. I really want to try out it's something called the 7200. It's a small, small IEM. I'm really interested in trying that, and I have a video idea for that. So maybe I'll try and get a hold of that. Anyway, they have been around for a long time. They're one of the pioneers for pushing the boundaries of price. Funnily enough, yes, the performance was always there, but sometimes, and back then, you couldn't believe that a set of earphones like the FIBASS was $1,000. Um, but now that seems to be pretty much the norm, if not a bit of a bargain. The, they do have another cheaper set of true wireless earphones on the market, but this is the flagship. Anything you see with final with the 8000 designation on it means that it's going to be the flagship. And it is pretty spec'd out. It's got a Snapdragon chipset. It's got Bluetooth 5.2. It has high resolution codec support, SBC, AAC, Qualcomm, APTX, APTX adaptive. It has a bunch of different playback modes. It claims to have 15 hours uh, volume, uh, 15 hours playback from the case. I was getting 13, uh, if not in the region of 12 and a half, uh, just because you have to push the volume a little bit louder. The case that it comes with on the outside looks absolutely fantastic. They have this texture on their Sonorous headphones. I also have the Pandora Hope 6, which was later renamed to the the Sonorous line of headphones and I really like this texture on the outside it's sort of rough and durable however on the inside of it it is very cheap and plasticky it's, it's very much like a KZ set of earphones so I don't like that however the mechanism on it is really cool that's going to be a fidget for sure this is the Sony Link Buds S by comparison so you can see that the final uh, case is far far bigger I can fit this Link Buds S into the small pocket on my jeans as I can with the Campfire Audio Orbit. Now, with the Link Buds S, just for reference, I consider these to be the best earphones on the market today uh, in terms of all round and true wireless performance. The Sony Link Buds S, I'll leave a link to all the pricing of these in the description below so you can go check out the pricing, but I'll also leave a link down below to my full review of the Link Buds S and why I think it's such a fantastic earphone. And I'll jump back and to talking about these two during this review. Now, if we pop it open, we take the earphones out themselves. First thing you're gonna notice, guys, is that these are huge. These are a big, big set of earphones and they've got a really weird design to them. If you look here. So you have this protrusion, sort of like the Apple style, but it elongates over the top. You have a large housing here, and then you have a secondary housing in here. And this ear tip is actually molded on. It's a, a rubber piece. I don't want to take it off right now because it's gonna be hard for me to put back on during the review, but you can see the shape of the ear tips themselves. So the ear tips actually cover over uh, the outer diaphragm here, and this rubber piece is not mounted directly on a piece of plastic like you would find on a nozzle system earphone like on the Link Buds S, for example. It's interesting, it does come with five different sizes, so you get super small, uh, small, medium, large, and extra large. I'm getting a decent fit, and I say decent, um, not a great fit, but a decent fit with the, the stock medium tips. And yeah, they're, they're just a big and slightly awkward feeling sort of earphone. I, I mean, that, this part here sits in at your tragus. Obviously, the, the ear tip goes inside your ear canal. This sits inside your tragus, anti-tragus zone. And then everything else is outside the ear. And from the side, it does look kind of cool. It does look unique and different. But I think with that weight distribution on it, it's not going to be something you're going to be able to use for sports. For example, if uh, these are IPX4, uh, but they do catch a whole bunch of wind and they do have a wind mode in their app uh, that you can reduce the wind with but I'm 
going to talk about that app in a second as well because I think it's important. But overall, the design, I'm not the biggest fan of this at all. Uh, I like a lot of final audios, other stuff is a lot smaller, a lot more usable. I like that you can just pop it into your ears, but it's just quite a big, weird shape. Now, the other thing that they have on this is they have touch controls. Uh, I really like using touch controls. I use them on the Sony all the time. And one of the things that I use the touch controls for is obviously play pause, to skip tracks, adjust the volume. Final in their infinite wisdom have decided to equip the ZE8000 with one of the worst iterations of touch controls that I've ever seen. The Control system could be split into left and right. For example, you could learn that left would adjust the volume up and down, um, play and pause on both from single tap, plus on the right you could have a double tap to skip forward and skip back, and then maybe a triple tap for your digital assistant, although I prefer a long press for your digital assistant like I get on the Sony. They haven't done that on these, the ZE8000. The ZE8000 has a system where it's like one tap to play, one tap to pause, two, ta two to skip forward, two to s turn the volume up, example. You need to actually get the, the manual out for this. The only one that I can actually remember and get inside my head is that you have to tap five freaking times to get your digital assistant on. So if you want to use Siri or Google Voice Assistant, whatever, you tap five times. Nobody's going to tap five times on their thing. There you go. There we go. Five times uh, to initialize Siri. Uh, incoming calls, double tap, single tap, touch and hold for two seconds to refuse a call. So uh, five bonkers. I, I, that's that's madness. Um, other things that are an absolute madness. The application that it comes with, you can see on the back here there's a QR code uh, and it'll take you to the Final Connect app. One of the worst applications that I've ever seen included with a, a an earphone. It virtually does nothing. It says that you can adapt your sound, uh, customize personal sound effectively by fine tuning through the Pro Equalizer. I sat for about 45 minutes with the Pro Equalizer on, swiping down and up on the, the, the low end bar because that's obviously the easiest way. Put on two, two feet quick musical doodles, uh, big bass drop right at the start. So I kept jumping back to the start, dropping the, the slide all the way down, putting the slide all the way up. And not a single bit of difference in any of the, the EQ bands uh, was made through the application. Other things about the application that I really didn't like was these earphones feature uh, a pass-through. Uh, so on a lot of Sony headphones, for example, my Sony XM5s, you can cover the ear cup and you can have a conversation with somebody. It's really convenient if you're flying and the waitress comes up or the ear stewardess comes up and she asks you what you would like to drink or what would you like for your meal, example. And you just cover it over, you can hear them completely fine over the top of everything else. Over the top. It dims your music and it lets in all the, the out, outside sound even if you've, you're sitting there listening with uh, noise cancellation on. Now these have that as well and yes it does work but it's activated from the application. So in what scenario are you going to be sitting there and be like oh yeah I really want to hear what that person's saying in a pinch. Let me open my phone, put in the passcode, put in my thumbprint, find the final audio app open that, find the section that controls the ANC modes, and then in that I'm going to turn on voice control. It's stupid. Um, again, put it to a long press, or put that as five taps if you want. Make voice assistant long press and then five taps for uh, the, the pass through on the sound. So that that is that. Next up, uh, another gripe I have that is kind of middling. Not really so important given I'm going to talk about the focus of these sorts of earphones. The ANC on it, this is not a reason to buy these earphones. The, the AN, ANC, the active noise cancellation, is minimal at best. It is not a strong Sony-like, Bose-like, Apple-like noise cancellation. It's not going to be jaw-dropping. It's, it's a very slight reduction in very certain consistent frequencies. 
it's not a powerful noise cancelling headphone at all. In fact, many China brands do a better job of this. Brands like Anchor, for example, or somebody that I'm thinking that do a better job. Uh, it's not the purpose of the headphones. Again, the, the purpose of these headphones is to be looked at as the noise, uh, the, the sound quality, and if you get ANC, it's a bit of a bonus, so we'll take it. Um, but yeah, don't buy these based on ANC. Definitely buy something like the Link Buds S or the Apple AirPods. In fact, I like Campfire Audio's route on this because Campfire Audio have just negated uh, noise cancelling completely and just focused on the sound. And that's where we get to the positives about the sound. The sound on these is really, really, really good. It is not got the biggest of sound stages I've ever heard, but it has got a really nice balance and it has got a really nice higher end set of frequencies. The mid range is very, very detailed and going into the highs, they are crisp and they're clear and they're airy. It's a very, very nice presentation. The bass, I would say, is just an average in quantity, but it's got good texture, good speed and good relief on it. It punches hard and it punches quick but not in the same sort of realm as like a BA would do but it has more authority and rumble than that now types of music that is going to be best suited to it again I think this is aimed at the Japanese market in particular this is going to do really really well with J-Rock because it displays good clarity and speed good instrument separation and imaging the other genres, maybe rock, uh, classic rock, uh, something natural, although more natural tones I would lean towards the orbit. Uh, it's not going to be something that is suited towards uh, electronic music, for example, or hip-hop, R&B. But if you've got something, especially with female vocals, I was listening to Emil Holm, a uh, really, really good song to test these out with. I was also listening to a lot of Polyphia. Uh, and it sounded really, really good with this. Again, to test speed, threw on some Devin Gray. Um, just performed really, really amicably and one of the better sounding true wireless earphones that I've heard in terms of technical performance. And by not having that intrusive ANC quality that disaffects so many earphones, I mean, the Sonys are my all-time favorite true wireless earphones but there's no denying that they're a warmer sounding uh, less technically perfect earphone than the, the final when it comes to sound these just resolve more detail with more clarity uh, and there's less warmth and uh, thickness to the sound it's a, a thinner sounding but not in a bad way earphone uh, I think it sounds really really good so when I'm going to talk about what I think about these is that I think it is an admirable effort. I think the the case for who's going to want to need these is very, very minimal. You need to be somebody that, for example, I have I have my Audiophile IEMs and I carry it about with a small DAP, uh, and I have my True Wireless. Uh, earphones that I use on the day to day going to the gym example um, is there a case for having both of these? If you're somebody that really doesn't like wires, I think so and I think as the technology starts to develop that yes we're going to move away from cables, it's inevitable that once the earphones like for example my favourite earphones the Canera Skull, if you could give me that sound in a wireless model with the same sort of size would I switch from using cables? I think so, I think so at this point, um, because I'm not too big on DAPs, I, there's a lot of sources, sources that sound very, very good at this point, and when you, if you subscribe to the channel in a couple of days time, I'm going to upload the review of the Campfire Audio Orbit, and I think that makes a better case for a purchase than the final. If you want something that's got a little bit of noise cancelling in it, uh, and you don't particularly like the fit on the Campfire Audio, which I do think is a little bit of a problem, although I have a solution that I'll talk about in the video. Um, I don't see, the application is bad. You know, the included application, that's bad. The ANC is not good. The case feels a little bit cheap on the inside. 
and it's too big it's not got wireless charging so you're losing a lot out on the sony but you are getting a lot back on in terms of sound quality and i really really like the sound quality of these the only thing being that if i'm going to have an all-rounder that sort of purpose i i have multiple earphones multiple audiophile earphones for example in my rotation right now i have the campfire audio solaris uh, the originals I have the Canera Skull that as mentioned, the Tin Hi-Fi and the Campfire Audio Vega and that handles me everything from heavy bass all the way to uh, classical sort of music with the, the Campfire Audio Solaris and I get a lot of variety from those earphones. With this I would be resigned to just having one certain type of genre or every genre apart from, uh, for example, a bass heavy genre couldn't be suited to this. So. I think it's good to see final in the space. As I say, there's one that I really want to try, but that's a, a wired uh, earphone called the 7200. I'm kind of excited about that one. I'll see if I can get that. Uh, this is a decent effort. It's very, very good sounding, but uh, it does have its drawbacks, especially when you're comparing it against established competition. And I think that that is the biggest problem for a lot of these companies is that you're not getting into pure hardware now, like balance drivers, LCP drivers, that, um, uh, planar magnetic drivers, you're getting into technologies that are a bit beyond the specialities of final and campfire audio. You're getting into noise cancellation technology, chipsets and stuff like that, that just Sony and Apple just dominate that area. So that's it for the final audio ZE8000, check out the campfire audio review that's coming soon and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.